Australia is in a little bit of a different position to, to your home country. Yeah. What's your perspective of where Australia's at? It's quite amazing how things have changed since we first saw each other in Malaysia and then mm. I was here with you at, uh, in Melbourne. Um, I find it striking, first of all, that we had such a savage, what we call global recession mm. on our side that we did. Uh, it's striking to me how well insulated uh, you've been. I mean, obviously, the growth rates that came out yesterday weren't that uh, terrific and your dollar is strong, etc. But when you look at uh, the broader pressures that we've been going through, uh, congratulations, you've been able to avoid them. Yeah, I mean, I guess that the strong Australian dollar, there's always uh, you know, upsides and downsides of that. It is an outcome, I guess, of uh, where we, our economy is actually at. And we tend to talk about it as though we dodged the bullet. And yet, we're a very small country. We have only about 3% of world GDP. And we need to be a trading nation. So we need to be trading with you know, the Western world, We've got China and India that you know are good partners for us as well, and a resource boom. But as you say, we have got now this what's been called a patchwork economy. You know, it's multiple speed. We don't have a strong federal government because we've got a coalition of of interests and minority government. The political scene is that they're more short-term focused than what they ever had before, and about getting re-elected. And yet, these problems are big long-term solutions. What, what strikes me is that somehow chambers and other groups are going to have to manage this huge economic transition that we're doing now, mm. where we see the Chinas, like you were saying, and the Indias and the BRIC, the other BRIC countries, mm. and even uh, the uh, the G20 minus the G7 yeah. Um, yeah. begin to really account for a majority share of global economic output. Yep. What we see from from our side is a tectonic shift in economic production and consumption. Mm. And it strikes me that we all need to be in front of that and that uh, chambers and other groups mm. are critical to making that happen. Eric, look, I'd like to thank you for coming along to Australia again. It's thank you always great to, to catch up with you. Great You've to made see a terrific, you again. Terrific impression, I'm sure, and all the people at the, uh, the Congress today as we move into the rest of it to get down to the detail. Perhaps you might leave me with one, one final thought for the businesses that are connected to the chambers. As an outcome of what you've been talking about, what, what would you do if you were one of the business people coming along to the Congress, hearing the story about where the world is actually heading, what would you do in your business yep. when you leave the Congress? First thing is that looking at day-to-day -day problems is not enough. You've got to tune in to the longer range horizon because these slower, slower uh, happening shifts may be uh, fundamentally rechanging the environment longer range. And then the other big opportunity I believe is precisely what you've been responsible and inspiring way and that is bringing people together in a kind of chamber context in league to think about how they can pre-position for these big forces changing their world. That's great advice. Thanks again, Eric. It's great to see you. Great to see you.